Hello and welcome back to Realm of Thrones 4.0. So this is our bonus episode where we have now made our way past the wall and we have three groups. I'm actually not entirely sure if we can even take all of them on at the same time. I'm probably going to suggest that we don't try to do something as risky as that. But instead, we'll just take on one of the middle groups here, which has around 500 troops. They have fearsome white units ferocious white units and night king they only have one night king in every single one of their parties by the looks of things and they move extremely slowly because of course they all uh well they're all infantry that's the thing they're all infantry so of course they're going to be extremely slow anyway um there's something you should know as well in the time the very limited or minimal amount of time that I've spent traveling from King's Landing all the way up here. I don't even know how long it took me. Probably, I don't know, um, maybe an in-game week or something like that. I don't know how many days passed, but whatever the case. Um, War Declaration has actually come in from Dragonstone. So they're obviously going to attempt to take something from us. I'm very much hoping that they will not take King's Landing. If they take King's Landing, things are going to be a little bit, a little bit iffy because, um, amusingly enough, when the vote came in for the ownership over King's Landing, Daenerys was the one that was actually out in front. And I voted for her as well, of course. And she now has ownership over it so that's obviously how everything should be you know that is how you know things should work and um yeah so hopefully dragonstone is not going to take um not going to take it away from us and we are not going to have to go down there and, and take it back from them or something like that anyway i'm actually not entirely sure what is happening with this particular battle seems like it is taking a little bit longer to load because of the enormous amounts of custom textures i suppose that are on the individual units of the night king's army that might very well be the reason for it but lo and behold only a mere five seconds later and it loaded yes isn't that always amazing that's such, that's such a fantastic thing to happen anyway let me see what i can actually do here my dragon is having some issues with the environment already not not a good start not a good start let's just hope that these guys do not have any kind of ranged attack i don't think they do right i don't think they do so this should be relatively simple for us to actually i mean it should be the simplest thing in the world shouldn't it we really should just be able to completely dominate them on the field here because they don't have any range. Yeah, as far as I'm aware, they don't have any range at all. Someone actually mentioned a long time ago when I was doing my previous series of Realm of Thrones, and you said something like, um, best way of countering them is a huge amount of really, really good archers. So if you do not have dragons, which, let's face it, you're probably not going to have dragons unless you have specifically sought out that particular avenue of progression you know because obviously for me I was wanting to be a part of House Targaryen I wanted to be a dragon rider and everything I thought that was you know the biggest deal in regards to this mod and I kind of wanted to take advantage of that as much as I could um, so yeah that's basically what we've got going on here and you can see that was it yeah that was it. Now, let's just actually see what happens here, because I'm wondering whether I can actually take the Night King prisoner. And what do these guys level up into? They don't level up into anything, but you can persuade them to join you potentially if you want to do that, which I think might be quite fun. Um, see, that's the thing. I'm not sure whether I want to do that, because what they have very low armor, as you can see. They only have 30 body armor. On the other hand, the Night King himself, he literally has some of the best armor in the game, as you can see right here. If you actually, and now here's a small little, um, I, I don't know, small little piece of useful information, or uh, shall we say um, interesting information, maybe if you are so inclined. What you can actually do is if you are, you know, going looking for dragons and you enable your, your cheat mode and you go into your inventory, and you take a look at the armor and everything and you, you sort by, you know, value or whatever you want to sort it by. And you find the Night King armor 
right? The Night King armor, boots, helmet, and so on and so forth. Then you can literally role play as him if you so desire. You can role play as him. So, in other words, what you can do is you could go all the way into the north as a new character. You could potentially create a, I don't know, free folk, um, free folk culture or something like that. I don't know how you would be able to make the White Walkers actually like you. I don't think there is any possibility for that to happen, but nevertheless, you could role play in some way or another as the Night King. And if you wanted to, you know, you could literally just go into a battle like I have just now with a dragon, and you could just go and kill a bunch of these uh, White Walkers here, take them prisoner, convert them to your side, and then you could have an entire army filled with White Walkers, and you could role play, as I said, as the Night King. So technically, that is that is a possibility, but it is definitely something that needs a lot of time investment, and um, that you're really going to want to do it. You really are going to want to do it. Otherwise, you know, it's it's going to be one of those things where you just kind of go, well, "Why am I bothering with this?" You know what I mean? You know, it's kind of kind of a bit annoying and um, a lot of time investment for that. So you have to really want to do it to be able to find the enjoyment in that. Anyway, there we go. Small little tidbit of information there if you so desire to utilize it, obviously. Um, but the armor in general is very, very powerful, as you could no doubt see. And um, yeah, I actually wonder... Huh. I actually wonder if I missed out on looting his weapon now. Yeah, that's a little bit problematic, isn't it? Ah, well, maybe I should go in for another battle then. What about what about what about if I go into a, a slightly larger a slightly larger battle? I don't know why the Night King sounds so incredibly weird. Oh, look at what's happening here. Look at my look at my What? Has this happened before? Look at this. I've never seen that before. That is hilarious. Elias is all the way in the in the sky and he's floating around attacking something like he is in some kind of uh, I don't know uh, old style kung fu movie you know like on the wires and things that they used to use anyway yeah that's <laughs> that's very funny anyway let's just go straight on in here not sure if we're even going to be able to achieve victory we probably will let's face it it is one of the easier um, easier encounters that we've had so far because I mean let's face it we don't have any ranged attack to deal with and um, that's the funny thing if we literally just I don't know actually let me just try this out real quick if I just stand here what actually happens can they kill me mm, they can do damage they can actually deal damage but obviously they're not going to be able to do too much and yeah, you can see here just how dramatically easy it is for me to eliminate them. I mean, literally, come on now. This is just an absolute massacre and they can't do anything about it. That's the funny thing. As I said, they don't have any ranged attacks. If they had ranged attacks, for example, if they had thrown weapons or something, I'm going to assume that the, the modding team will probably make them have thrown weapons or, or maybe something else. I don't know. I mean, lore-wise, did they have thrown weapons in the show or in the books or anything like that? I don't think so, right? I don't think they had anything like that, so um, they're going to probably adhere to that a little bit more than how effective they are in an actual gameplay sense, because as it stands, if they were to have thrown weapons, I'd probably be dead already. Um, but that would not be very lore accurate, as I said, I, as far as I'm aware, at least, if they didn't have thrown weapons before. Maybe they could have some kind of magic uh mm, not sure if there really is that much magic you know it seems more i don't know I, I was kind of um a bit perplexed as to the well i know the definition of high fantasy but is is game of thrones low fantasy i think i think game of thrones might be low fantasy even though they do have dragons that breathe fire so i don't know uh, you know because that's the thing. Are there actually spells? Are there spells that people cast? I think so, in some way or another, right? There's like some... Sometimes there's like uh, dark magic or curses or something like that. I'm not I'm not entirely sure. I, I don't think that they really display that that often, if at all. So I'm going to assume that it is indeed low fantasy, because otherwise high fantasy is going to be things like you know, Lord of the Rings and so on and so forth, because Lord of the Rings obviously has spells at the forefront of, you know, things happening, you know, because everyone's, you know, you've got elves and you've got dwarves and you've got 
people casting spells like Gandalf and so on and so forth. But yeah, anyway, there you go. I think we can probably pretty easily tell now that a dragon is a surefire counter to anything that the White Walkers can come up with, as you can quite clearly see. Super, super easy to achieve victory with that, as long as you keep your dragon, like I said in the previous episode, if you keep your dragon slightly above the ground, just enough to be out of melee range, then you're going to be completely fine. Um, amusingly enough, though, there is a giant here available for recruitment. So I'm thinking what I'm going to do We'll swap out one of these Novoshi archers and we'll just gain the one giant. We did use, by the way, if you missed this, there is a, uh, a previous series of Realm of Thrones and that was in the previous version of it where, um, you know, they didn't have dragons implemented yet, but they did have giants implemented, which is what these guys are, of course. And you can see their stats. They are absolutely incredible. And in that particular series, I had an army entirely comprised of giants. And I know what you're thinking. Well, isn't that going to be super, super bad? Well, yes and no, because obviously the giants do not possess any kind of ranged attack. So, of course, that's going to make a pretty significant difference there. Um, yeah, they actually didn't drop the Night King's weapon. Yeah, they actually didn't drop the Night King's weapon. So that means that I maybe didn't miss it in the previous in the previous looting screen. So that's quite nice. But yeah, anyway, uh, so giants are, of course, not... Um, n they're not invincible, but they are extremely powerful. They have great armor, massive amounts of HP. Their weapon proficiencies are top-notch. And the only thing that they don't have is, of course, as you might expect, ranged attacks, and they don't have shields either. So if you have an army that is opposing you, that has a significant amount of archers, well, bad things are probably going to happen. Yeah, bad things are going to happen. Okay, so wait a minute. There seems to be a bit of an issue, potentially, with Dragonstone. We've now done our little, little bit of... Um, a little bit of perusing around here, as you might expect, and we have now completed our little expedition out into the wall, and, well, you can quite clearly tell what happened. We just completely dominated them. So there really isn't much uh, much for me to do here, except travel back to King's Landing, because I'm actually kind of, I'm kind of interested to see what's happening, because it feels to me like, as you can no doubt tell, the... Targaryens are actually having a pretty significant problem and I'm a bit worried about them even taking King's Landing back because if they can take King's Landing back that's going to be not the best end to the series and I would like to try to you know get that going a little bit more but um, yeah anyway we will be going back there I could have technically tried to win against the White Walkers without using dragons but I think I, I think the main deal that uh, quite a few people wanted to see was whether dragons would be able to win against them too easily or how difficult it would actually end up becoming and well from what you can tell it was not that difficult at all okay so hello we have axel florent here hello what are you doing sir i would very much like to murder you if at all possible he seems to be running away, but we are going to catch him, no doubt. Thank you. And uh, I'm actually wondering whether this guy has a bunch of our prisoners. Um, it doesn't seem like it, actually. Where, where where, were my people defeated then? Because it feels to me like they, they just disappeared. I don't know. There must be another army around here somewhere that is um, that is responsible for that particular victory. Um, but we're going to do a little bit of damage, as I say. We're going to do a little bit of damage with the dragon once more. And then we're going to move on and see what we can do. Because I'd like to eliminate a lot of these guys here for now. Because if we can eliminate a lot of the infantry, then I'll be very, very pleased. And then also the cavalry. These guys really need to go away. Thank you. Because the, the more cavalry they have, the, the worse it's going to be for us. Let's tell our forces to charge in now as well. And I'm going to need to do a little bit more, just a little bit more. I want to get around 200 kills, 
And then I'm going to be pretty happy with that. Let's see if I can actually do it. Seems like I will be able to. Yeah, there is 200. Just about 200. And we're going to be stopping around about here. Because I'd like to get a little bit of damage done with my two-handed sword as well. I've actually always had a soft spot for doing some infantry... In, well, infantry combat on the fields of battle. I think that's quite fun, you know. Being able to do that is quite fun. And let me see if I can actually do something against someone here. Oh, hello. Are you are you going to get... No, you're not going to come closer to me. Oh, I see how it is. I see. Oh, okay. Fine. Oh, no one wants to come close to us right now. I guess I don't really blame them. Eh? We can't really blame them too much. Okay, well... Whatever the case, we have eliminated 250 of the enemy so far. They or they do outnumber us, don't they? Yeah, I think they outnumber us by like 100 or something like that. So we have given ourselves quite a nice advantage here. So shouldn't have to worry too much about it, hopefully. But that doesn't mean that we are excluded from any kind of defeat. That is still a possibility, potentially. Let's just try and eliminate this guy if we can. There we go. And then this fellow, before he actually slices us in two with that wonderful two-handed Bardishi had. Well, it seems like that is indeed it, and it seems like Sauron wasn't really able to do that much either, which is really weird, surprisingly enough. I would have expected her to be able to get quite a few kills, considering we did thin out the cavalry presence quite dramatically in this, in this particular battle, but... Oh well, never mind, there's only one enemy remaining. Uh, that actually brings me to another point which I always found really perplexing. I don't know whether you've noticed this either, but whenever there is a vassal or um, cavalry units remaining in a particular field battle, they always seem to fight till the very last, which is very strange to me, because imagine you are a king? He's the king. Oh yeah, because we actually executed Stannis. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> uh, yes, anyway... What I wanted to say is, it's always very weird to me to go into a field battle. And when you're in this field battle, you're kind of thinking to yourself, okay, well, we should be forcing the opponent into some kind of retreat action quite soon. Because we have eliminated so many of them, it must be the case that their morale is low. You know, we must be getting to a point where they're just going to run away, right? However, that doesn't actually always happen because they have a vassal still alive. And that vassal is running around on their horse, making it very difficult for us to get any progression. In regards to their, um, to their morale problems. And that, that happens much more often than you might expect. And I'm always extremely surprised at it, to be honest, because... For me personally, if I was in a situation where I, well, where I was going to be, uh, you know, outnumbered, you know, what, what is it? I don't know, 500 to, to 10 units or something like that. Because sometimes it is indeed like that, where you actually do have a situation where the enemy vassal and a handful of cavalry are just running around in circles in the battlefield and your cavalry are trying to catch up, they're trying to eliminate them and of course because they're pretty well armored and they've got some decent stats and everything, it just takes way too long to eliminate them. It really does. I don't know. I don't know why that happens. Anyway, Tumbleton is actually under siege, amusingly enough, because Tumbleton rebels just took it or rebelled against whoever it was. Dragonstone actually has a significant portion of territory as you can see right here too, so that's probably the reason why they wanted to declare war against us and actually take King's Landing, because 
I mean, really, this is literally the only fief in this area that they don't have ownership over. So I can assume that that's the reason. Anyway, let me see what I can do here. Uh, is there anything I can spec into? Yes, I can spec into more trade skill, which is exactly what I'm going to do. And we could try to take Duskendale. It only has 200 units in there. So shall we try it out? Why not? Let's try it out. They have 23 days worth of food, so I'm not going to be doing anything with them. Oh, there's a peace offering from Dragonstone. That's hilarious. Right. Well, um, what do you want to do about that? Well, I, I don't know, actually. But uh, there's Magor. He has actually reached um, age 14, which is actually quite amazing. So let's actually see what he can get. Uh, probably want to get him some more intelligence, all things considered. And let's get him some engineering as well. He could go for a bow or he could go for riding skill. I think we'll get him some more riding skill. And he's also going for one-handed and two-handed. That's nice. And there we have it. Okay, so we are now ready to go in. As is always the case, I'm going to take down the gates and then I'm going to get off my mount and we'll see what we can do without any dragon assistance. Because I know that I said, hey, you know what? I'm not going to take any prisoners. We're just going to murder everyone that we can. But of course, this is not... King's Landing, you know, this is not King's Landing, we are not up against 2,000 plus enemy units or anything like that, we are, we are the outnumbering force here, we are the ones that have the overwhelming advantage, so I shouldn't have to worry too much about achieving victory here in the most cutthroat way possible, so theoretically, I should be fine. And I shouldn't need to worry too much about it, so I'm just going to take out a couple of people here, just on the battlements. Just a couple. Nothing too dramatic, of course. And then we are going to be uh, probably going in through the center. Oh, it seems like people... Oh, look at that. Yes, it seems like some of my people are actually going into the center, which is nice to see. Let me get off my mount real fast. And then we're going to... Oh, no, please don't run me down. Oh, the dragon almost killed me for a real quick second there. Okay, now I'm just going to be real careful. Oh, the dragon's wings are being extremely irritating right now because it's literally covering my vision every, I don't know, every couple of seconds. And I'm... Yeah, it killed me. Ah, uh, Yes. The dragon literally killed me. I don't know what to say to that, all right? I don't know what to say to that apart from, why did you do this, Viserion? Why? Why did you do this? I, I don't even know why it's why it literally moved in this direction. Because theoretically, uh, I parked it here. <laughs> parked it, you know. Uh, but yeah, I basically put it around there and I was thinking to myself, oh, that should be absolutely fine, right? It's not going to move or anything like that. It's going to be absolutely... Uh. Yeah, never mind. Oh well. I wanted to get some fun action going on there. I wanted to actually fight a couple of things myself, but apparently Viserion was uh, taking offense to that in some way or another, and that's exactly what happened. Oh well, never mind. We will be taking all of these troops and rescuing them for obvious reasons. Of course, we're then going to be putting them into the garrison, and uh, hopefully that's going to be working out quite nicely for us. Let's show mercy here while we can. Let's donate troops to the garrison. There's going to be a significant amount of them, of course. So let's do exactly that. Let's do this. There we go. Wow, there's going to be a lot of them actually being placed in here. There we go. And oh, yeah, I should actually also mention that uh, I did finally get my... Uh, my leadership to 275. Yes, yes. I am actually quite surprised that we even ma managed to make it there. Um, but yeah, we did. So there you have it. We now have 275, which does give us an, an additional 25, which is the reason why you may be seeing my army slightly larger this time. Um, it's giving me slightly larger army size. 
So I'm very pleased with that too, because as you can see, if I go to leadership here, this is what it does, plus one party size for each leadership point above 250. And so that immediately gives you 25 um, party size, which I very much appreciate, which is definitely not the case for Immortal Charm, which is the... Uh, the charm skill, because as you can see here, plus one influence per day for every skill point above 200. And you can see I'm getting seven. Yes, I'm getting seven, not 87 as it may be, uh, as, as you should be getting, because as you can see, it says plus one influence per day for every skill point above 200. And I have 287. So technically I should be getting 87 influence every single day. But of course, that is a bit too overpowered in my opinion. It feels a bit too strong. 87 influence per day, that would be way too crazy. So I'm not surprised that it is not actually equaling out to that amount. But uh, yeah, it's obviously just a, you know, incorrect description or something like that, which is kind of weird in itself. Anyway, um, yeah, I think we should basically be done now with well, pretty much everything. Gerald is going to attempt to besiege Duskendale, which is absolutely fine. And if he wants to do that, then I welcome him. I will be waiting here for some time, and let's see if he decides to go in. He is actually deciding to go in. All right. Well, this is going to be interesting. Daenerys has actually taken this as well. And we can just get rid of that. And we're going to be... Are you serious that we're actually going to be... Ugh. Okay, that's hilarious in itself. We're paying 5,500 even though uh, even though Dragonstone is not, not actually winning. Oh well, never mind. There you go. So there's the siege that has now been stopped. And uh, yeah, well, we've taken an additional fief. So I suppose that's pretty good. And no doubt Dragonstone will probably be uh, attempting to wage war at uh, some point in the near future. Anyway... And so there you go. We were able to take on the Night King and a variety of White Walkers and actually do very well because, let's face it, the dragon is extremely, extremely powerful. And otherwise, apart from that, we were managing to take almost the entirety of Essos. We just have three towns that we failed to take because of Dawn. You know, Dawn just making peace consistently. Um, and then obviously we ended up taking King's Landing, which I am very pleased about. So I thank you very much for joining me on this journey. This is the final episode of this series. And this is indeed just a little, little bit of a bonus to show us fighting some of the White Walkers generally. And uh, I didn't actually expect it to be so incredibly fast. I thought to, I thought to myself, I'm going to have a, a pretty hard time dealing with those things. But no, no, we actually didn't. And it was quite quite interesting. Anyway, if you have any mod suggestions that you'd like me to add to the next series, I already have a pretty cool theme slash idea for the next series. So I kind of know what I want to do. But if you have any suggestions in general for quality of life improvement mods, or anything that you think is going to be interesting, then by all means, leave it down in the comments below. Otherwise, I thank you very much once again. And I'll see you next time.